Welcome back to the Catnip Podcast. My name is Grace and today is Wednesday, April 17th. This is a podcast about knitting books and baking and cats, but most importantly knitting because that is what I love to do all day, every day. I have various social medias that you can follow me on. I have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Ravelry. I'm most active on Instagram, so if you'd like to see what I get up to during the week and what my cat gets up to during the week, you should definitely follow me over on there. I also have show notes, so links to things that I will be talking about will be on my blog, which is linked down below, or if you're um, on if you're on YouTube, or if you're on my blog already, everything is already there. I am also a knitting pattern tech editor, so if you or if you know of someone who is in need of or is an interest or is interested in having a tech editor for their upcoming knitting patterns, I would love to talk to you, to work with you. Um, you can find out more information either by sending me a message or you can check out the Graceful Edits tab on my blog. Um, I said that all very fast, so now I'm out of breath. I'm a little behind in recording today, but we're gonna get into that. I have a lot of knitting to cover. I have some things that I currently do not have that I'm gonna talk about that I have finished. Um, it's just been a whirlwind of a fun time. <laughs> so um, without further ado, if you like to grab something tasty to drink, something to craft upon, something to snack upon, an animal to snuggle, a laundry to fold, whatever it may be, um, my little animal is uh, sound asleep over on his little cat hut over there. So normally he's over here uh, romping around, but right now he's sound asleep. So he's having a good time either way. Um, whatever you are doing, um, I hope I can either bring you rest and joy, or joy and help getting through an unpleasant task, whatever it may be, um, do all those things, none of those things, whatever, and you can come back and join me for some crafty chat. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I, for some reason, this feels so much longer than uh, the normal space of time that I've recorded, and I don't think it has, has been. Um, I've gotten a lot of knitting done. Uh, things have happened, things have not happened, plans have been changed, last minute, um, whatever. I don't even know. Um, the eclipse happened. We did not end up going to drive and see it, which is kind of a bummer, but that's okay. It was very cloudy. Where we were going to be and where we were, we didn't actually get to see it. It just got dark. So that was kind of a big bummer, but I still got a lot of knitting done that weekend, which was nice. We kind of made a, a weekend out of it um, to replace the traveling that we would have done, but that's okay. It was all fine. Um, also this past Friday was my mom's birthday, which was very fun. So she and my dad actually came to Houston to hang out and to celebrate and to meet Rusty, which is super fun. So we have been partying nonstop. Um, they left yesterday on Tuesday, so which is why I didn't record on Monday. And then I was just catching up yesterday after they left. Um, so we are recording today and we're editing today and it's either going up today or tomorrow and that is fine. It's a worthy cause. <laughs> um, but, so, um, I have finished objects that I do not have with me anymore. Um, it was a last minute decision on my part. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I decided that for my mom's birthday that I wanted to make her a set of three pairs of shorty socks. And um, like I said, it was kind of last minute in the grand scheme of knitting <laughs> eight, eight socks. Um, but I got it done. <laughs> I finished... Um, two pairs and gave her the two pairs and half a finished sock of the last pair um, when we were doing presents. So she opened the the set, obviously. And so then I could work on <laughs> the last pair in front of her and it wasn't a secret anymore. It worked out very well. Um, and then I got the last sock done like the evening before they left. So. That 
is really what I've been working on for a long time. <laughs> what it feels like I've been cranking out shorty socks, which goodness gracious, shorty socks are so satisfying to make. Um, I mean, they're super fast in the grand scheme of things. Compared to a regular sock, they are, I would say less than half the time, honestly. Um, <laughs> it's probably not accurate, but by the time I had knit eight pairs, eight, eight socks, eight individual socks, that's not true. Six, I can do math. That was, that's silly of me. I didn't knit eight socks, I knit six socks. Um, I uh, felt like it was taking me less than half the time of knitting a regular sock. So I'm really good at knitting shorty socks now. Um, <laughs> but she loved them. It was really wonderful. I pulled a bunch of random things from my stash and just kind of like played with color and did fun things for the heels and toes and cuffs and things like that. Um, I used basically the shorty set one of the shorty sets from Summer Lee Knits. Um, if you are new to the podcast or if you're new to the knitting world, she is a very prolific sock uh, designer. She's wonderful. She's written a book. It's quite wonderful. Um, and I've knit a few of her socks at this point, and I'd actually gotten her... That's um, the set that I used contains the basic B shorties, which I made for myself, and I finished earlier this year. Um, so... For my mom, I made, I can't remember the name of it, but it's got the, like, slip stitch ribbing thing in the arch of the foot. And it's got a, the pattern has a, spe a special name, and I can't remember what it is. Um, I knit a pair of just regular ones, um, and then I knit, my favorite ones, I knit the ruffled pair, which I believe is, like, all that flutters or something like that. I should have looked this up beforehand, but I did not, so I apologize. But it will be in the show notes, I do promise that. Um, and I used various stash. There was Hugh Loco, there was uh, Suburban Stitcher, there was Heathered Handmaids, there was some Hedgehog, there was some Knit Picks, there was um, one other one. I can't remember what, but it was a wonderful stash busting experience. It was super fun. I had a blast knitting these socks for my mom, and I'm really glad that she really liked them. So um, it was wonderful to celebrate her and to see my family and to just hang out and enjoy each other's company um, and get those socks knit. So because of that, all the goals that I had made for myself last time we chatted haven't happened but I did knit six socks so <laughs> there is that um oh did I not talk about oh you know what I I have another finished object I realized I finished my um uh rain or shine shawl I will go get that for a hot second I completely forgot okay I finished it it's all done it is all done and those eights that I wanted to use are now free and I actually didn't end up casting on the rift tee like I wanted to um, after finishing this and using these eights like I feel like this is the perfect size this is exactly what I was looking for if only it was cold <laughs> we love this look you know we've got clean hair we've got nice lipstick on hot and it's humid not a time for mohair for sure but I do like this look we're gonna keep this on until I get too hot but um yeah this is rain or shine by Stephen West this was a languishing whip um, I used knitting for olive mohair in five different colors I made a customized size. It was basically until I ran out of yarn. I didn't run out of yarn on all the colors. I had one ball per color, um, but I did run out of, once I ran out of one of the balls of yarn, 
um, I decided that that was my signal to stop also with the size that it was. Um, last time we chatted I had said that I was going to wind up the linen yarn which is somewhere oh I see it it's up there um, I was going to wind up the heathered handmade linen yarn that I had gotten from her anniversary sale for our eclipse road trip um, once I got this done and freed up these needles and that didn't didn't end up happening because I don't even know why um, I'm trying to remember if that overlapped with when I decided to make the shorties for my mom because that probably would have been why um, I honestly don't remember but either way it didn't happen um, which I'm bummed about, but it didn't happen for a reason because then I got the, the shorties knit, so it was all good. <laughs> Another thing that I said that I was going to do, which I have not done, but I'm going to do this right after I'm done recording. Like, as my footage is exporting into iMovie to edit, I'm going to wind up my, um, Kettle and Hearth Fibers sock set that she very kindly sent me to show you all, and I talked about it last time, but this is the Marion Berry uh, colorway. This is the Ember sock set, so you get 400 yards, 100 grams, plus 80 yards, 20 grams of 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon. Um, I am so excited. These are being cast on today. <laughs> Because I have an empty pair of sock needles over there um, that are waiting to be filled. And they're going to be filled with this. And I'm so excited. Um, <laughs> last time we chatted, I had done some research about which pattern I wanted to use. And um, I did decide that I was going to go with one of um, Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. She has a few patterns that are um, themed after uh, Beatrix Potter characters and um, I believe it's the Mrs. Tiggy Winkle socks that I ended up going with. It's either that or Jemima Puddle Luck. I don't remember which one. I think it's Mrs. Tiggy Winkle because I Mrs. Tiggy Winkle was like one of my all-time favorites. <laughs> Um, and I remember thinking that that was like perfect that it worked out that way. I bought the pattern, so I'm going to be able to tell that way. Um, so sorry. But I am so excited. I have knit one, one other one of, uh, Kay's patterns, Kay Jones. Um, loved it. I'm so excited. Mrs. Tiggy, yes. This is Tiki Winkle. I'm so excited. It's kind of like a lace pattern-esque look. Let me see if I can blow this up. This is on the project page. Of course, this will be linked in the show notes, but it will be these socks. So, ta-da! I am so excited. I am so excited. Um, part of me also kind of wants to do a different color toe maybe and use the mini for two of the three heels toes and cuffs or something like that and maybe do let's see what would look nice with that mm. oh. let me reach over to my I do like that. This is uh, the Knit Picks Swish. It's not Swish, it's Stroll. I do apologize. Stroll in the Goldenrod Heather colorway. Or, I think this would be just as pretty. The Pecan Heather. Kind of makes a little bit more brown. That seems more Beatrix Potter-esque, but I do love this gold. But who knows? I, just for like the pop of color of the for the toe or the... Or something like that. I think that might be fun. Or do like a few little stripes in the cuff or something like that. 
think I'm gonna go with the gold. I really like that. So that's getting cast on again today. The time the wait is over. Socks have been knit and socks will be continued to be knit. Goodness gracious, I have knit so many pairs of socks this year already. I am on a roll. I don't even know how many pairs I've knit at this point. And I am so proud of myself. I am doing exactly what I wanted to do. Like we said, like I've said, and I continue to say, this is my sock era. This is year, the year of my socks. Other, I've knit socks for other people as well family and non-family and I just love them and I just want to knit socks all the time <laughs> except it's too hot here and it's it's a bummer that I can't wear them all the time um I'm gonna take this off now we're getting a little warm so rain or shine by Stephen West we'd love to see it I do need to weave in the ends, but obviously I don't, I'm not going to be wearing it anytime soon, so the need to weave in my ends at this moment is very low. So I will, um, I could do future me a favor and weave in the ends and like everything actually is already woven in, it's just trimming them. Um, I could do future me a favor, but no, why would I do that? <laughs> that would be the smart thing to do, you know? Um, so, we're going to go over a few things. I honestly, I do remember moving progress keepers, so I'll be able to see how much, okay, so this got zero done on it. I'll briefly talk about this. This is my Frida Feather by Trin Anneli. Ann. I'm using Morningside, Morningside Road. Roadside, Morningside. What, what am I trying to say? I have the ball band in here. <laughs> it's a combination of those words. Morningside Road Fiber in the mist colorway. This is just a, an asymmetrical shawl with some fun little like feathery stitches in there that are fun. Um, so I got zero work on this, but that's okay because I did other things <laughs> um, that got done and were very successful. So that didn't get done, but we'll be in the docket of knitting this upcoming couple weeks. That's the thing. One thing I have worked on is everyone. I overcame, I think we talked about this last time, I had overcome my tale of woe with my love note sweater by Tin Can Knits. Um, I had had a little issue with numbers and casting on goodness knows what size, not the size that I wanted or what I was looking for. And only discovered after I had divided for the sleeves and was a good amount of inches into the body and then I discovered and then we had to rip it all out. And I've now divided for the sleeves, everybody. I did that last night. And it looks so better. So much better. Looks actually like it is going to fit the way that I want it to, which is awesome. Um, I am using, uh, fingering weight is Grandpa's Cardigan from Lavender Fiber Company, and then I'm holding it together with just a white from Southampton Yarns, which I believe is a webs company, um, that I've had in my stash. Um, so now I'm just knitting on the body. I'm almost back to where I was. I am not even remotely close to having knit all that I frogged, but that's fair because I was, I had 30 extra stitches in the cast on, um, or 36, did I say 36 or did I say 30? It's 36 extra stitches and um, that obviously makes everything uh, larger than it was supposed to be and so I used up way more yarn. 
<sighs> but we are on track. We are on track now. And I'm very happy with it. And I'm excited that it's now in the mindless era. Everything's in an era. You know, it's the <laughs> thanks to Taylor Swift, everything has its own era right now. Um, <laughs> So yeah, we're, I j literally just divided for the sleeves and we'll continue on. Um, once I knit a little bit more on the body, I'm going to try it on to make sure I am liking the length and see if I need to lengthen it at all. Um, yes. Another thing that I changed about this pattern, because when I recast it on, I was just really fed up. <laughs> I was not having a good time and really did not want to do another provisional cast on whether or not it was the new one that I had learned or if it was the old one that I for the life of me can't get right when you unz unzip the provisional cast on I can never get it to work um, I know it's me but I haven't I don't know I just did a regular cast on and we'll pick up stitches and do the the neckline and ribbing and everything without a provisional cast on. I don't, it's not that I don't care, but it's also that I don't really care. <laughs> it's a low priority for me and Maybe that's not great. Maybe it'll come back to bite me in the butt. I honestly don't know. I don't think it will, which is why I did this. I did think about it. I did weigh my pros and cons of not doing a provisional cast on versus doing one, and I decided that I didn't think it would matter all that much. Because of the... Like, the shaping in it, or the shaping. The, like picking up and decreasing and then immediately going into the ribbing it's not like there's a good amount of rows between the pickup and the ribbing um which would make it more important to make it look more seamless but because that it's like pick up in basically one row of decreases which is going to bring everything together anyway and right into the ribbing it's not as imperative as I'm visualing it to make sure that it's like a seamless transition from my cast on edge to my picked up stitches and not to toot my own horn but I'm very good at picking up stitches so I'm not too worried we'll see you know I am fully ready to <laughs> accept that I did the wrong thing <laughs> accept the blame and the, uh, the consequences of my actions but I feel like it'll be okay so not a top priority for me very valid for other people obviously that is how it is written to do and just gotta follow the pattern I did not um, <laughs> but I think it's gonna be okay <laughs> this is in my lock mitts pie bag that I love it's oh, like every time I pick it up it's always like oh my goodness this is so soft I love this bag so much it brings me so much joy and I got it at Woolen Folk um and I got to meet Haley and that was really wonderful so or not Woolen Folk excuse me it was Cake Palooza the better one um so that's very wonderful loving working on that now I'm feeling much better we're in a much happier place with that project so I'm glad that we could go through those trouble times together and have come out on the other side and we're we're doing wonderful so things are good <laughs> um, I didn't work at all on this so I will briefly talk about it this is my Elton pullover by Hohi Locatelli this is my um, Gilmore Girls themed yarn from Sorella Yarns. I have Dragonfly in as my Surrey, the fuzzy yarn, and then I will follow as my main color or the main yarn. They're very similar. The Dragonfly in is more of a variegated yarn, so you can kind of see the the changes there. But I love this so much. I need to work on this more. Um, Honestly, I don't really know why I haven't been working on it, but 
I love it. So again, similar to the shawl, the Frida feather, like I've been busy, I've been working on other things, but we're throwing this back into the rotation. And I do love that. I just generally love these mindless things. I just, there, I have a few projects that have been very brain intensive. <laughs> Um, which is not a bad thing. It's nice to have a balance. It's nice to have a few of some like that and some that are mindless. And I feel like I just, my brain has been leaning, my brain and my energy levels, I should also say that, um, have been leaning more towards the mindless because sometimes like even on top of whether or not something requires a lot of brain energy it also requires like physical energy <laughs> maybe that's just me I honestly don't know <laughs> if you can relate to that let me know but it's just the things have been very busy and I'm just like I don't I just really just want to knit in the round and I don't want to worry about anything <laughs> these cables are just really they are working my mind a lot but worth it worth it another thing that I have not worked on but I want to throw into the the ring of um, things that I am actively working on is my tessellated pullover which is a Andrea Mowry pattern um, I got yarn for it or I got some of the yarn for it at Rhinebeck last year which was super exciting and I'm using um, additional yarn such as Kelborn Woolens and Knitting for Olive from Maker and Stitch which is my mom's local yarn shop in Colorado. Um, I haven't worked on this in a good while um, so it is a thing. Um, we're gonna oopsies we're going to have a little chat you know as we do here. We love to chat, especially while we craft and while we knit and crochet and do all that stuff. This is looking so good. Like, I really just need to finish this, but I love this. This is just gorgeous. I, on a side note, before we get into this discussion, I want to make the tessellated cardigan so badly. It is <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. Um, but I was watching um, Casey of Young Folk Knits uh, her podcast, which if you're unfamiliar, um, you really need to check out her podcast. She's just such a sweet person. I got to meet her at the Rhinebeck weekend, um, and her podcast is wonderful. She's so sweet. She tested, excuse me, the... <clears throat> She tested it, the cardigan, and and I think she actually tested it, the vest as well. It's either the vest or the pullover that she tested, I can't remember. But she tested the cardigan, and um, she said that the carrying of the yarn and like the ends and all that kind of stuff was a really big, um, not a struggle, but it was an additional like layer of difficulty into the pattern and like the idea of juggling because like juggling the the three balls of yarn that are attached right now in the vest is a lot for me <laughs> to handle. It's definitely adding a layer of irritation for me personally it has nothing to do with the pattern. It's just my patience is low. Um, so the idea of doing that again for a cardigan that's significantly bigger than the vest at this point in time is a big no-go. But I love the cardigan. The cardigan is just so beautiful. <laughs> I wanna do it someday. So maybe I need to finish the vest and take a little break and not have anything tessellated on my needles and then do the, the cardigan. I think that'd be very fun. So that was that story. <laughs> Um, also very quickly about the yarn, I'm using Kilborn Woolens, um, for my main color here. I'm using Knitting for Olive Mohair, and then my fun, 
spin cycle type yarn is from Feederbrook Farms. Oops, we got some rogue yarn there. And I love it so much. It was so cool to go to the Feederbrook Farms, their booth at actual Rhinebeck. Um, or, I, excuse me, New York Sheep and Wool, the festival. That was um, definitely a highlight. Goodness gracious, was it crowded in that booth? But it was so worth it and so much fun. And the yarn is just so nice. And they were so nice. And it was just a, a very wonderful experience. It's one of the things that like stands out to me in that yarn weekend. We're gonna get to the point of what I'm going to say. <laughs> I do promise. Um, if you have been a longtime viewer of the podcast, you would know that I feel very strongly about your needles and the needles that you're working with. And um, it makes a big difference. Working with nice tools really truly does make a big difference in whatever type of crafting you do. Whether they're knitting needles or crochet hooks or like quilting gear, your sewing machine, or like scrapbooking stuff, or planner things, or any type, like just having nice tools makes a, the world of difference. And so in the past, when I've been struggling with projects, or if for whatever reason, like I can't bring myself to pick them up to work on them, um, I ask, one of the questions I ask myself besides like, do you really want to finish this? One of the questions I ask is, would it help if I changed the needles um, to a more, like, do they need to be wooden? Do they need to be metal? Do the, is the cord too twisty for this particular project? And I, I need like a straight one, like on a chow goo or something like that. Um, and I love the needles that I've been using, but it has been, I realized that that was one of the reasons why I haven't worked on this tessellated pullover. In addition to the three balls of yarn attached and the fact that they're all, one of them some mohair and they're all kind of like different sizes and they're all over the place. I probably should also put this in a bigger bag. That would probably, <laughs> though I do love this bag. It's a pumpkin spice bag from um, Rosen Seams. And I think that's her new name. Yes, frozen seams. So, um, one of my favorites. So, I need to change my needles. I have the, I've had the needles all ready to go in the bag for a good long while. I haven't changed over yet, and I don't know why. I was working on other things, um, but I'm going to do it, and I. I love these needles for other things. I think one of the issues is that because you have mohair and everything there, sometimes it does catch on this little, on the join between the needle and the cord, which is not a problem if you're knitting something, I think at a bigger gauge, like if it was like a worsted weight or a DK that doesn't necessarily, or could slide over maybe a little bit better. But if it's a, a mohair, it's gonna snag regardless of how how much you try to not let it snag um so it's just a harder knitting process um but i do love these needles these are the um brick house fiber arts needles so they're actually the ones that are in the shape of a hexagon i believe and i got these at um dfw and the points are so nice I love them so much just not for this project and so they, they can be used for something else and maybe it may be a new cast on because goodness gracious I am feeling the urge to cast on all the things right now <laughs> um, so maybe that's what it becomes but I do need to switch the, this project over to some new needles and I know that it's gonna make a world of difference already like I don't even need to test it out I know it's gonna make a make a big difference and again I do actually think putting these three balls of yarn in a bigger bag would definitely be helpful. So I'm pretty sure when I cast this on like pumpkin spice was definitely like the theme of what was going on because it was very shortly after we got back from 
the Rhinebeck weekend in October. So it was very on theme with the, t the time of year and all that kind of stuff. And I'll continue to use this throughout the year regardless of if it's pumpkin season or not, pumpkin spice season or not. But um, I need to put it in the bigger bag. We're going to have a revamp of this project. We're going to do a refresh and it's going to be wonderful. And yes, I do know about gauge changes. <laughs> I have thought about it. <laughs> and I am going to just throw caution to the wind. We're going to try it. And I know that just experience with knitting with these um, brick house fiber arts knit needles versus knitting with the chagu needles though they're both sixes i knit with them differently um it's i'm i think it's gonna be fine so i'm not worried again i'm also very prepared to eat my own words and take responsibility for my actions if it is a problem <laughs> In which case, I'll just knit on a smaller needle. So, no big deal. Again, the tessellated pullover by Andrea Mowry. Um, gonna do the needle switch. It'll be wonderful. Happy days, happy days. Next up, this was a new cast on. No, this was not a new cast on. It was, I don't think I got very much farther from what I showed it to you last time, but that's okay because again, I knit six individual socks <laughs> and I finished my rain or shine shawl. Last time we spoke, I had just cast on these socks, um, which are also by Summerlee Knits. These are in her new um, book that just came out. Um, and I'm completely blanking on the name on the name of the book and the name of these patterns, but I of this pattern. I think it's like, it has to do something to do with sailors, maybe. Um, but it's a just a plain cabled sock with like your twisted ribbing up at the top. And yes, I'm gonna remember to do the twisted ribbing on both socks because I didn't do that recently, but you can't tell. But I'm gonna remember this time, or that's my plan. <laughs> um, this is yarn from Night Owl Fibers in the Let's Dance colorway. This was part of a birthday present from my mom and my sister. So I am really loving working with this yarn. It is super fun. I've knit with her yarn before and she's actually a local to Houston, which is very cool. Um, the contrasting color also came as kind of like a set from Kinney Knittery, um, which is where my sister went to get the book signed, which is wonderful. And so this is uh, with Plucky Knitter, um, the fingering weight. So, loving working on this, but I haven't worked on it in a while. These cables are definitely uh, slow going, for sure. I'm not gonna sugarcoat that in any way. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm loving these. This is a pattern that is only in the book, but she has, Summerlee has another pattern that is very similar that is, avail is available for individual purchase, and I believe they're called the Cider House Socks. It's basically the same thing of just like this little baby cable, and you've got the ribbing, rows of ribbing in between, um, and you're just, they're classic cabled socks. So I'm loving this, even though I haven't worked on it in a while, I am really excited to get these done and just to continue to work on them. I am also planning on doing, using this um, stroll in the Rainstorm Heather colorway for my heel, just to throw another color in there because why not? Um, so yeah, I am so excited about this. It is, I, though I'm gonna have two pattern socks on my needles cause I'm gonna do the, the Mrs. Tiki socks um, later this afternoon. 
those are patterned these are patterned usually I'd like to have one mindless one and one patterned one on my needles at the same time but I don't care <laughs> I mean, this is mindless in that I don't have to look at the pattern. It's not mindless in the fact that the cable road takes a long time. <laughs> or a long time in compared to the other rounds, let me say that. It's not like a horribly long time, but it just takes a little extra paying attention. But those are the cabled socks <laughs> from Summerlee Knits um, out of Night Owl Fibers. Loving those. Um, now we're on to our final project. Everyone. Um, I don't think I've showed this bag to you all. This was actually in my um, advent calendar last year. This was part of the final big gift. And I don't know if it has the name of who made them in here. But their pockets are incredible in here. And it actually came with this like little pouch on the inside, which is super fun. I don't think there's anything in here no but I love it super awesome and it's got a nice little handle that you can detach if you want um, so I don't think there's anything else in here my advent calendar last year was um, charming you yarns who's local to Texas which is very fun um, I made the daft days cardigan with that yarn um, I still need to sew buttons on it and technically weave in the ends and trim them. Um, but we're not going to worry about that right now. I have gotten my cal my advent calendar for this coming year, which is crazy to say. That's just... Time is going by very quickly, but I'm so excited. That is a conversation for another time. Let me show you what I've what this project is. You all will probably recognize it, but this is my ghosties vest. My ghosts in the orchard pullover vest by Thea Coleman. I have finished the two fronts, which I think I had done last time. I think you had seen this part. And my plan was to have the back finished and all the ribbing finished by this time, but that did not happen because again, I knit six individual socks and it was for a worthy cause because I wanted to do that for my mom <laughs> um, but I have started working on the back we've um, finished all the armhole shaping I believe so now I'm just kind of tootling along with the pattern and um, I think there's some shoulder shaping as well so it's gonna go by pretty quickly. This pattern, everybody, it's just, my brain I think is just not, has not been in the mood for figuring these cables out and the shaping out and all that out. <laughs> so it's not been my top choice to work on, but I am so close to being done and I know it's one of those projects that when I once I get into it, I'm like, yes, we are on a roll. We'll just knit on this until we're we're done for the evening or we're done for the afternoon or whatever, just so I can get it done. And um, I am just really slow going, <laughs> which is okay, because it's not a race. The point is to not be fast. The point is to enjoy what you're working on. Just as a friendly reminder to you and to myself, the point is not to be fast. Unless you're in a speed knitting competition, in which case that is the point. But that is not what we are doing here. <laughs> and if you were in a speed knitting comp competition, you would not be working on this. This is not speed knitting competition material for goodness sake that is not at all um I was going to say something that I felt like was very profound and I have completely forgot what it was um uh, yeah it's completely out of my head that's okay <laughs> anyway the point is to not be fast the point is to not do it quickly the point is just to enjoy 
the process and the project and then getting to wear it which I'm going to I have enjoyed the process and the project and I will enjoy wearing it it's just that the, at this point in time my brain is a little tired and the cables and everything is a little hard to remember <laughs> just, okay it's okay one wonderful thing about this project, which there are many wonderful things, do not get me wrong. One of one of the wonderful things about this project is it has allowed me to really work on and perfect my ability to drop stitches down and change around the cables because I went the wrong direction and then pick them back up and bring them back to the top and so then I can do a cabled row. And um, before I would have been like, oh, that sounds very overwhelming. I don't think I can do that. And now I'm like, that is a piece of cake. No big deal. It's not a problem. So I'm grateful for that experience. <laughs> I'm grateful to add that tool to my tool belt and be more confident in that because that is a very good skill to have just in general if you cable a lot um and yes so what is my yarn my yarn is cascade eco wool in a colorway that i can't remember it's not the cinnamon one it's something else but it is in my project page so I do know that. This is um, stash yarn. I'm almost done with this little bit. And then I'm actually going to frog this massive sweater that I knit years and years and years ago um, and never wear because I didn't think that knitting the right size was important at the time and it is too... the sleeves are so long. <laughs> Sleeves are too long, um, and I just don't wear it. So, I'm gonna repurpose that yarn to knit this, and I'll have plenty left over, so I'm not worried at all. Um, and I still obviously have a little bit here, but I'm almost done. I will be done soon. I'm not gonna say that I'm gonna have it done next time we chat because I said that last time, and that didn't happen. Um, but I did knit six individual socks. How many times have I said that this episode? I don't know. That's definitely going to be the title. <laughs> I'm proud of that fact. I am so happy that I have knit six individual socks in a short amount of time. I am very proud. And I'm glad that they worked out. And I'm glad that my mom liked them. So. Uh, I like I said I don't have them but I will be posting pictures of them on my Instagram so if you I may try and put pictures in here in the in this episode I may have already done that if I do it'll be when I'm actually talking about them I don't know if I did do that so sorry if I didn't <laughs> but please go follow me on Instagram and check out the pictures there they will also be on Ravelry um, but yeah so again this is my ghosties vest it's called ghost in the orchard by thea coleman um this is for a very very big lover of cables it's one of those things that by the end of it you're like "Ooh, i don't want to see another cable for a good amount of time i say that as i'm working on cabled socks but We'll ignore that. <laughs> um, I'm so happy with this though. I mean, I'm. it sounds like I'm complaining about it and I'm so excited to be able to wear this. I have a friend who's making it as well. So we're kind of doing a little knit along together. Um, I've got upcoming knit alongs uh, planned with friends such as Steaking and the Crazy Sock Lady just posted her summer sock camp or whatever it's called of like just a general sock knit along and as we all know 
Did you know I'm in my sock era this year? <laughs> um, so that seems right up my alley. I need to do a little bit more research and planning for that. Um, but that's very exciting. So I am not tired of this project, but I am ready for it to be done. <laughs> So I am not able to wear it until it gets cold here again, which is probably not going to be for a long time. But we'll blink and it'll be Thanksgiving, you know. That's just the way time goes, apparently. Um, that is all that I have to talk about this week, everyone. Um, thanks for being patient this week and a delayed upload going out. I appreciate that. Um, it was so much fun to get to spend time with my family and not worry about recording and knowing that I could push it a couple days, which is nice. Um, I have show note information, social media information, tech editing information. If you have any questions or if I've forgotten anything or if you just want to say hi, please feel free to send me a message on Instagram. I would love to say hello. Um, yes. I have so many crafty plans, and the first and foremost is to wind this up so I can cast this on because I really want to. <laughs> My sock needles are empty, and so to me that is a requirement that they must both be full at all times. <clears throat> and they're currently empty, so we're going to remedy that. Wallace footage is importing so I can get started because I really want to knit my Mrs. Tiggy Winkle socks out of kettle and hearth fibers. So, I'm so excited. You should go check out Michelle's yarn. It is beautiful. She also has beautiful project bags and things like that. Um, I keep meaning to get myself one of her bags. Maybe I'll also look into that while I'm <laughs> while I'm editing this episode. Things to do, things to do. But anyway, thank you all for being here. Thank you for hanging out with me. Um, I hope you've had a wonderful past couple of weeks and you continue to have wonderful weeks and weekends. If you have crafty plans, I hope that they are so successful, so successful. If it's heating up where you are, I hope you're staying cool. If you have bad allergies where you are, I hope your allergies are not too bad. Mine have not been great. <laughs> but that's okay because that is life. Um, we move on. We take allergy medicine and we just kind of deal with it, um, such as life. And we continue to craft um, because that does not really affect that at all. They're not really connected. Anyway, what am I talking about? We're saying goodbye. <laughs> I need to stop rambling. Um, yeah, I've got general crafty plans. I'm really excited about the tessellated pullover or vest, honestly. Um, the idea of switching those those needles over and like actually doing it um now that I've shared it with you all so it's a little bit of accountability for me which is nice um I am really looking forward to working on that because I really do enjoy knitting it it's just those needles are not the best for that project and that's okay you know I had to I had to experiment and I had to try it and um we're gonna make it work and we're gonna love it it's gonna be great and put it everything in a bigger bag. Um, we can hope for ghosties. We're not gonna say that it's gonna be done, but maybe it will be done, who knows? No pressure. So yeah, that is it. So I will bear you, I will. So I will bid you all farewell at this point. Thank you for being here. You are wonderful. You are enough. Good luck with all of your crafting endeavors, whatever they may be. And I will see you all next time. Bye.